Hi guys and welcome to the channel. You're watching The Electric Singularity. Great to have you. Now, if you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. Nice to see you here again. BYD. Some people are calling me a BYD fanboy. I don't think I am, guys. I'd call myself a BYD realist. Now, some important news has come up that you need to know if you're looking at BYD, whether that's for, through an investment lens or whether that's simply through an interest lens. And that is that BYD has been upgraded to the top tier of EV battery manufacturers. They are the second Chinese cell maker on the list. Now, there's been some recent reports from different Western media agencies that Chinese companies are not going to succeed in the West, honestly. And I'm talking about, when I say reports, I mean long reports. I report on one of these, I report on one of these reports in a video, which you can watch on the channel. And this is the kind of FUD. Guys, if you don't know what FUD is, then Google it. This is the kind of FUD being spread by the mainstream media. This is the kind of stupidity being spread by the mainstream media. Disparaging Chinese companies. Now, I understand if you have a point to make. I understand if you have some logic to share. But I don't understand sharing your emotional feelings because you don't like China or you're scared of China. The better thing to do is to observe a company rationally and make a rational observation. That's what I aim to do when I make these videos. That's what I aim to share with you. Rational observations that enable you to either invest or buy cars or stocks or batteries or whatever it is you want to do to give you the information you need to make rational decisions. I'm not going to sit here and, and just talk nonsense to you because I'm scared of China or because I don't like China or I don't like America or I don't like France or I don't like whatever country or person or car maker or whoever it is, I'm going to give you objective information. Now, BYD is a company to be reckoned with, fanboy or not. It's irrelevant, guys. Fanboy or not, they are a company to be reckoned with. And I'll tell you one reason why. 12 months ago, they made a decision. And that decision was, they wanted to become one of the world's biggest battery suppliers. Now, four years ago, they were the world's biggest battery supplier. True. And CATL, since then, has been, for four successive years, the world's biggest. Part of the reason for that is BYD does, is not CATL. Yep, obvious, I know. But BYD remember, make many, many, many different things. Cars, trucks, buses, a huge range of variants within those three categories. Batteries, computers, chips. The, the number of things that BYD makes is far greater far greater than probably any, any one person who doesn't work at BYD fully understands. They've branched out into a huge number of fields. CATL, what do they make? Batteries. Ford, what do they make? Cars. So, BYD actually do a lot more than you realize. Now, like I said, 12 months ago, BYD decided that they needed to focus more on batteries. And what, is, what impresses me about this is that last year was a down year for batteries. Yep, because of coronavirus, demand shrunk last year for batteries. However, BYD still re recognized the fact that over the next decade, battery demand would significantly increase. And I mean significantly, I mean explode. Now, all of you watching this know this. You're not idiots. You know battery demand is going to explode. But the question is, how do we get enough? How do we make enough batteries to supply that demand? Now, obviously, there's many companies, existing car companies, saying all kinds of things. Let's be honest, Hyundai, Volkswagen, although they're doing well, GM, yep, sound like they're doing well, talking like they're doing well. The truth is they do not have enough batteries, nowhere near enough to supply the demand that, they're, that the people buying their cars will have, will be asking for. Do you really think people are going to walk into a Ford dealership in 2030, 50% or 60% and say, I would like a petrol car? Don't give me that electric version, which is clearly better and cheaper, because they will be cheaper. Give me the petrol one, which is more expensive, more expensive to own, more expensive to run, more expensive to replace the brake pads, more expensive to fuel. Yep. Way more expensive to fuel, way more expensive to service, and I'm going to pay, have to pay more for it. It's not going to happen. Ford, BMW, even Volkswagen, all these manufacturers are not planning. They're not planning for the future. So companies like BYD will step in and give customers what they want. 
If someone goes into a Ford dealership and wants to buy a Ford Focus, or whatever vehicle it is, and Ford don't have it in an electric version, most customers, 9 out of 10, will not buy that vehicle. They will go elsewhere, and they will buy the battery version. Now, you can already see proof of this through the sales figures in different countries. Australia is a great example. We give zero incentives right now to electric cars. However, MG is selling their EV at a higher price than comparable SUVs. Even though we're a country of brand names, we only usually buy brand name cars, all of a sudden, MG sales are through the roof. Absolutely skyrocketing. You can see there is huge demand for electric vehicles, and that demand, as electric vehicles decrease in price, is only going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, why does this matter for BYD? Well, obviously, BYD had the capacity to supply the batteries that people need. They had the capacity. They're building in the capacity. The reason for this, guys, is that many manufacturers have not even yet decided on the specific battery they're going to use in many of their cars. That's serious, and that's true. BYD obviously knows what they're going to do and have planned for what they're going to do for the next 10 years, and that is the blade battery. Now, 12 months ago, like I said, they decided they wanted to become, once again, one of the world's largest suppliers of batteries. And during the last 12 months, they put themselves in a position to do so. They signed joint ventures, contract JVs, a JV with Toyota, and word is in the last week, they've also signed with Mercedes to supply Mercedes with batteries. Yep, the Blade battery is good enough for a Toyota. It's good enough for a Mercedes. And when customers find out these facts, right? When they find out that a BYD vehicle has the same batteries as Mercedes has, what do you think they're going to think? Do you think they'll be willing to pay three times more for a Mercedes? Or 20% more for a Ford? Or 30% more for a Toyota? Do you really think that's going to happen? I don't think so. So, the benchmark mineral intelligence has elevated Chinese lithium-ion battery cell and automaker BYD to benchmark top-tier EV battery cell manufacturer status, joining CATL, Envision, AESC, LG Energy Solutions, Panasonic, Samsung, and SK Innovation as Tier 1 cell manufacturers. BYD is only the second Chinese lithium-ion cell producer to reach the top tier after CATL, marking the first battery producer to be, to be promoted since March 2020. The company's promotion to the top tier comes as it officially begins to distribute its cells to other OEMs through its commercial battery arm, Fudi Battery, F-U-D-I. Prior to Fudi's formation in 2020, BYD reserved its in-house EV cell production exclusively for its own vehicles. Benchmark noted that Fudi cells have been qualified by several automakers. In combination with BYD's existing global EV and e-bus manufacturer status, this meets Benchmark's requirements to promote the company to Tier 1 status. Benchmark said that BYD will offer nickel-based and LFP chemistries to its customer base through Foodie while continuing to focus on LFP cathode chemistries for its own electric vehicles. To support its own requirements and that of its new and growing customer base, BYD is ramping capacity. Its most recent development was announced in April 2021 when the company said that it had started phase two expansion of its cell plant in the Bishan district of Chongqing, Sichuan, which is set to reach 35 gigawatt hours, a significant increase on its initial 20 gigawatt hour plan. Data from Benchmark's latest lithium iron battery mega factory assessment shows that BYD will have 170 gigawatt hours of capacity in the pipeline by 2025, all of which will be concentrated within China. So you can see BYD is taking battery manufacturer, manufacturer very, very seriously. When BYD has enormous demand for its vehicles, do you honestly believe this manufacturer will continue to provide, to provide batteries for Mercedes, Toyota, and any other companies that it has agreements with? Guys, I am extremely skeptical that that will happen. I believe BYD will grow very quickly. Once it starts selling the EA1 outside of China, they'll realize there is demand for many millions of this vehicle and BYD will focus on its own battery supply. This will put them in a huge position of competitive advantage versus other manufacturers who, have, who obviously will have to get battery supply from other companies and pay a premium to do so as there will be enormous competition 
for the world's battery supplies. The lithium iron phosphate BYD currently produced is extremely cost effective, it's virtually fireproof, and it is very space efficient. It doesn't take up a lot of space within the pack. Only 20% or less of space is wasted, whereas in other, some other vehicles it's up to 50%. And it can do over 3,000 cycles before coming anywhere near 80% degradation, or I should say 20% degradation down to 80%. That matters. The perception that this battery will last for over 1 million kilometers easily will be one that will help BYD into the future to sell these batteries. Obviously, we can see evidence of that with their JV with Toyota and Mercedes. Clearly, this battery is a good battery, the kind of product people will want to buy. And I'm telling you now, BYD is undervalued. And by 2030, this stock will have at minimum 5x, maybe 10, with a PE of about 90 versus Tesla's PE of around about 650. Don't get me wrong, I've invested heavily in Tesla and I believe in the company highly. But it gives you an idea in terms of perspective of the two companies. They're actually very similar com companies in many ways. Guys, thanks for watching. I look forward to bringing you more information about BYD when I have it. When I hear of any more JVs or any more launches in different countries, I'll bring it out as soon as I can. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.